Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna cover three exercises to become really strong in calisthenics. Now, this is more focused on the beginner to intermediate level. These three exercises are really efficient and they're just gonna build some superhuman strength, which is gonna help you later down the line progressing into skills. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the three exercises we're going to look at today is going to be compression leg lifts, pike push-ups. If you've seen my how to build your shoulders uh, with calisthenics, you know I love my pike push-ups done well, so we've got to add that in there. And then lastly, we're going to work on the explosive pull-up. The compression leg lifts will get you really strong in your hip flexors and your core, which is going to make things like the L-sit really easy. And also you can progress that then into the V-sit and many other cool things. The pike push-up is going to build loads of strength in your shoulders, which is going to help with handstand push-ups, 90 degree push-ups, even planche push-ups. And then lastly, the explosive pull-up is going to help build really good vertical pulling strength, which is going to benefit your muscle ups. Okay, so the first exercise is going to be the compression leg lift, like I said. And this one is going to be really good for building up your strength in your hip flexors and your core, which is gonna help L-sits, V-sits, and many other cool skills. And the L-sit can be used as like a transitional uh, skill in between some combinations. Once you start building together some of the push skills, you can throw an L-sit in the middle just to kind of catch your breath. In the beginning, it's gonna you know, be a necessary skill to learn, but over time, it's gonna just get easier and easier. But to make it feel really easy, you have to build a lot of strength in the compression leg lifts. So when you do this exercise correctly, you're gonna feel your quads burning, um, but it's not your quads, it's your hip flexors. Your hip flexor just goes to about halfway down your leg, so you think it's your quad, but it's not your vastus medialis, it's not that teardrop, it's not the outer uh, swoop, swoosh of your quad. So it's got nothing to do with your quads, it's just the very top here, which is the hip flexors, okay? And many people have tight hip flexors, um, tight, not type. <laughs> so what you're going to want to focus on is the most important thing is to be upright, okay? You don't want to do a compression leg lift and lean back because here you're going with the motion and you're not resisting gravity because you want to go against it and compress forwards. So you need to lift your chest up, compress in and lift your leg there and it's a lot more tougher. So try the two differences. You know, try lean back, lift your leg, and then you're like, okay, well, that was pretty simple. Then go forwards and you might find, find yourself rounding. And if you can't get up straight and lift your leg, then what I recommend doing is go against a wall. And just at first, just work between lifting one leg at a time, keeping that chest up. You don't have to make it any intense by, you know, rounding forwards or compressing uh, as forwards as you can. You can increase the intensity over time, but just always remember, I say like a Venus flytrap. So just imagine compressing in like that to kind of get this hip compression to happen. And as long as you keep your chest up, it's all gonna be good. But if you struggle, go up to the wall and the wall is gonna support you, but you still wanna try to pull yourself off the wall just ever so slightly. Once it becomes easy to lift one leg at a time, try both. And so, you know, keep your fingers clawed to the floor and kind of pull yourself forwards, okay? And again, it doesn't have to be super intense. You don't have to go forwards, just nice and simple. And just maybe have your hands uh, by your knees or slightly behind, and you're just gonna grip the floor and you're just gonna lift and try to pause a little bit, you know, Try to add little dead stops here and there. Your quads are gonna be burning. And uh, yeah, super simple. You wanna focus on high reps in this exercise. Don't do, you know, only like five, even though it's gonna burn after five. You wanna try get a minimum of 10. So yeah, anywhere between 10 to 18 reps per leg is gonna be enough to build strength. It's gonna suck at first. So maybe just start with one set at the end of your workout. Then the next time you work out, add in two sets and progressively overload it then until it becomes easy. And uh, I guarantee you it is, it's gonna, 
It's gonna make you cramp up in the beginning. Over time, you will get used to it and you will adapt. And the second exercise, now, like I said in the previous video, how to build your shoulders with calisthenics. I do love my pike push-ups done well, and uh, there's a reason for that. It's because it builds a really great amount of shoulder strength, which will help you achieve handstand push-ups, 90 degree push-ups. It can also help with uh, planche push-ups too. So it's really important to get this one right. And you know, you can begin this from the beginning. So simply just go up into a pike position. Don't make it any intense and then start to perform pike push-ups. Remember to not do it like a regular push-up. It's a vertical push. So you have to swoop forwards and then push all the way back. Okay, so that's one of the things you really have to know about the pike push-up compared to a regular push-up where it's just pushing up and down. And then what you're gonna wanna do to advance this, and this is what I mean by, you know, how this exercise can build a lot of strength. So, you know, right now, maybe you're starting here, but over time, you can walk more into a more strict pike, and then you can practice blocking, which I show you and talk about more in how to build the shoulders for calisthenics, and you can perform your pike push-ups a lot more strict with a great blocked and engaged shoulder position, which is gonna put so much pressure on your shoulders. And every time I show this exercise to anyone that you know thinks they have pike push-ups mastered, they're like, oh my God, I feel like I've been doing them wrong the whole time. And then they understand why they can't do a handstand push-up yet. It's because you know they don't have the strength in this position. So you know, you really need to focus on keeping your weight forwards, okay? So really don't have your weight all the way back here. Bring it over onto your hands, you know, come nice and forwards, block that shoulder, push all the way up, and it's gonna build so much more strength. And if you want to make this harder, what you can do is just slightly elevate your feet. You know, of course, elevated pike push-ups are the next progression but you can start with a really small elevation. And even if you have uh, some small parallettes like this, you know, doing the pike push up in this sort of elevation is going to help you build so much more strength. Remember to pike in, keep everything nice and locked, practice that block position and then push yourself up. And you can always advance this by lifting your feet, by doing it on a higher elevation and just doing it more piked. So a really great exercise for the shoulders, which is gonna help with so many skills later on down the line. And the last exercise is going to be the explosive pull-up. Now, this is considered an intermediate to advanced exercise, depending on how you perform it. And I feel like as soon as you start performing it, you realize how difficult it is. And then over time, as you get stronger and you're able to progressively overload the skill, you will be able to pull higher and higher, getting all the way to your waist and even adding dead stops at the top, which is a really great place to be at in your pulling strength. The benefits of the explosive pull-up is it's going to build extreme pulling power and also explosive strength. Now, usually there's two types of people. The person that has better fast twitch muscle fibers and the person that has slow twitch muscle fibers. So the fast twitch would be the person that's better at the 100 meter sprint, maybe explosive push-ups. You know, he's the type of guy that would do all his reps quite quickly. And then the slow twitch muscle fiber guy is the marathon runner, the long distance, the more endurance king, you know, the guy that can last a long time. So yeah, this person would be better at doing things a lot more controlled and also holding isometric positions, which is extremely difficult for the person that is more explosive. You know, if you are the slow twitch muscle fiber, person, then, you know, the explosive pull-up is going to feel really difficult in the beginning, but over time it is going to get easier. And I want to talk about how you can make it more explosive over time, because if you are this genetic type and you are naturally the slow twitch muscle fiber person, you're, you might get frustrated and you might be like, well, how do I pull fast when the guy that is the fast twitch um, the guy or girl, <laughs> when the guy that is fast, which can perform it quite easily and can progress it a lot easier. So to become more explosive, you're gonna have to build it up in steps. So at first, try to pull the bar 
just to your shoulder line. So when you pull up, try to get your chin well above the bar and just pull kind of to your shoulders and make sure to try to do it as fast as possible. Keep the reps really low because it's gonna take a lot of energy and a lot of strength to do these. So just stick one to two reps in the beginning and just pull as fast as you can. And as soon as that starts getting comfortable, start aiming to midway uh, on your chest. Now, a tip I have for you is try to create a small little swing because if you think the bar is here and if you swing a little bit, you'll be able to pull yourself out of the way because if you're just hanging in the pull-up position, you're gonna hit the bar and you're not gonna be able to pull all the way to your waist. So, you know, when you start getting it to your chest, you wanna start approaching it with a small little swing and then make sure to lean back and always pull the bar to the body part you're pulling to. So if it's your chest, make sure your chest touches the bar. If it's your midsection, your core, make sure your core touches the bar. If it's your waist, make sure the waist touches the bar, you know, otherwise it doesn't count as a rep. And so, Keep this approach in mind, so take it in stages. You know, first aim for your shoulder, then your chest, then your abs, and then your waist. And then once you get there, you can start adding reps and then also dead stops. And that's kind of my favorite when you're able to pull up and kind of hold yourself there and you know, your arms aren't locked out, so it's not really a muscle up. It is an explosive pull up and that just, to me, it looks really cool. So yeah, super great exercise to learn and have in your arsenal. Now it does take a long time, so please, you know, don't expect yourself to pull to your waist straight away within the first couple of sessions unless you already have a really great uh, pulling base. So yeah, just take it steady, just add it into your workouts and over time measure your progress and track your progress by seeing how high you can pull. Now remember, you know, there's a baseline of training, so don't try to progressively overload every single training session. Don't try and PR every session. So if you start getting it to your chest, don't go for your core, don't go for your waist the next one. Take it in stages, you know, get comfortable just pulling to your chest and try get more reps, add more sets, build loads of volume that way, and then you can start going lower and lower until you get to your waist. And just give yourself like a timeline, you know, and be realistic, don't, you know, don't think you can do it literally in a couple of trainings. Um, you know, calisthenics takes a long time. And if you do get something fast, something that I've learned from my experience, it means you probably don't have it and it's probably gonna leave you uh, quite quickly. It's really hard to maintain some skills. Um, so if you do get lucky and you do learn something fast, it usually actually goes away for a little bit and then it comes back over time once you've built more strength. So continue to build in your strength. And these are just some of the exercises I believe that will help you get really, really strong in calisthenics, which will help you towards skills. So the explosive pull-up is helping you for the muscle-up. So that's everything I wanted to cover in today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope you're able to take one of these exercises away with you and add them to your current routine. And I always appreciate any comments or suggestions for the future videos. I definitely have some plan that I'm gonna film for you. I've really been enjoying making these videos for you lately. I already can't wait to film the next one. And yeah, I'll see you there. Ciao.